Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it is time for the asking of the Herbert Erpaderp. I'm the Herbert Erpaderp, and I have your questions ready to answer, and so that's what I'll do. First, on Discord, which you're welcome to join if you haven't already, link in the description. Duncanuva said, Have you gotten any injuries whilst building models? I asked due to cutting my thumb on a recent kit build. I have, but not many and nothing too serious. I think the most recent thing I did was to kind of stab myself with the wire when building the Fruel track links, and I would hesitate to really call that an injury. I didn't bleed or anything like that. I have of course cut myself a fair number of times, and more than once I've bumped my arm into an uncapped knife on my desk. Obviously the solution to that is being more mindful of my knife and always putting the cap back onto it. I don't really cut myself much at all lately, I feel like I've learned some form of knife control. I'll try to demonstrate that quickly. You can see that I'm using the tip of the pointer finger to provide the movement rather than the wrist. With my grip fairly high up on the knife, this means if it does slip from what I'm cutting it doesn't really have a lot of travel, so I shouldn't cut myself unless I'm way too close to the blade. It's also important to use sharp blades. If you do cut yourself it's worse to be cut by a dull blade than a sharp one. I hope your cut wasn't too severe. Some dude with a silly name said Apple or Samsung. I don't really feel very strongly about either. I have a Samsung phone, but I feel no loyalty to that company and can't see why I should. Apple products, while are probably quite good, seem to be a bit more expensive for no real gain. And they have that almost cult-like fanbase which is a bit off-putting, but I'll use whichever device I can get the best deal on. Of course, changing from the Android ecosystem over to iOS or whatever it's called is probably a bit of a pain in the ass at this point, so I probably won't ever do it. Either way, whichever gets the best results for the best price is probably what I'll go with. The Big Boy said, Any tips on cleaning and sanding small parts? My Model Collect S300 has a lot of both small fragile parts and mold lines, so I need a tip to avoid getting angry at my model. I don't really have any super secret tips or anything like that. Just take your time, go slowly and make sure you've got a good grip on the parts. You don't want them to go flying. Or at least maybe get something to catch them before they hit the floor if you do drop them. I guess if you feel yourself getting angry, stop, take a step back and maybe do something else for a little bit. It's better to stop and cool down rather than continue to make yourself angry and frustrated. I know from experience. Maybe if you look at the parts and how they should go together, you might see some parts that don't need to be cleaned up quite so much because they won't be visible when the model is complete. That might reduce the workload a little bit at least. Ratto said, I want to be a famous YouTuber. Got any hints? I don't know. From what I can tell, you're probably going to have to be super obnoxious and loud. Maybe try appealing to the lowest common denominator. Maybe film some dead bodies or do and say a bunch of racist things. I hear that's quite popular with big YouTubers now. If you actually want to make videos, I guess the trick is to be consistent and make the highest quality videos that you can and also make what you want to see, rather than just what everybody else is doing. But I wouldn't really know what I'm talking about anyway, I, I have no idea. Postapo Gestapo said, How is the Bismarck painting going? I haven't heard anything for a while but still waiting for a video. I'm afraid you'll be waiting for some time. I don't have any immediate plans to paint it so I haven't started. I'll probably get around to it eventually though. I do have a bunch of other things that I'd rather get painted first. Mostly stuff for bolt action. James Valentine said, Been thinking about my next Rubicon purchase and want to do a captured vehicle for my Germans. But something a little more unique. Right now it's a toss up between the M8 Scott or the SU-122. You never see them in their respective forces anyway, so which do you think I should go with? No worries about in-game effectiveness, just cool factor. Hmm, it is a tough choice. I think maybe the SU-122. I think it looks a little bit cooler than the Scott, but both are interesting choices. Maybe you could give the SU a German Commander's Cupola or something like that. Do be sure to share the results with us on Discord. Top Bunk Productions said, Have you heard of Commando Comics? They're short and small war comics mostly set during World War II that tell an action-packed tale of brave, mostly British, shooty mans, plane mans, tank mans, sea mans, <laughs> and sneaky mans, among many others. 
Even if you've never heard of them, I highly recommend checking them out if you can. They might even give you inspiration for builds like they've done for me. I believe someone, it might have even been you, has mentioned them before. I'm not really familiar with them, as in I haven't read them, but I've heard of them and have seen them. I'm not really a big comics guy, but maybe they'd be worth checking out someday. Ratto said, have you thought about asking Plastic Soldier Company for free review samples? I would love a review of their new 15mm Valentine tanks. I'm kind of excited about the new 15mm Valentines, and I have thought about doing that kind of thing before, but it's never really been more than a brief thought of maybe I should. I've always thought my channel to be a little bit too small for them to worry about, but I guess Rubicon did send me stuff when I had less than a thousand subscribers, so maybe that's just me trying to talk myself out of having to try and communicate with a company. It's not a bad idea though. I will actually go and make the effort in the near future. I've also been thinking about trying to get in touch with Battlefront, among others. There's a whole bunch of companies and their models that I would love to do videos about, but can't really justify the cost of all the models. I don't really want to say your new name, some dude. <laughs> he said, have you heard of the game series Silent Hunter? I recommend Silent Hunter 4. The fifth one is too much of a simulator and I don't find it as much fun as the fourth one. I'm pretty sure I've heard of it, but I'm not especially familiar with the series. I probably wouldn't enjoy it, at least the fifth one, if it's a serious business simulator sort of thing. I didn't really have time to check it out at the time of writing, but maybe it's worth a look, especially if it's cheap. Sneaky Zaku said, do you have any other hobbies besides those that are model or game based? Things like walks, running, sports? Well, I don't especially care for sports and I don't really consider going to the gym to be a hobby because I don't especially like it, but bushwalking isn't too bad and I quite enjoy getting out and seeing some scenery and exploring. And I guess I would consider music a hobby now. I don't play in a band anymore and, well, I don't really play very much at all lately, so it's kind of a hobby. And I guess mouse breeding is something of a hobby too, but I don't really do that very much anymore either. I ended up achieving my goals there and it's not really sensible just to breed hundreds of mice for no reason. I quite like to read, but I never really get the time to read an actual book. Or rather, I don't make the time, but I listen to audiobooks quite a lot. I guess that's kind of a hobby? I guess the answer is, no, not really. I don't really have hobbies that are quite the same level as model building and video games, so I'm not really sure if they count as hobbies at all, but I do stuff. That's what matters. You again! This dude said, can you play some bass for us? I'd like to start learning the bass, but I don't have an amp. The annoying thing about playing the bass is it's barely audible without amplification, so that's pretty important. At the moment, I don't have a way to connect my bass to the computer, and I'm way too lazy to set up an amp and mic it up. But maybe one day I'll get an interface and try to record something. It's actually something I've been low-key considering, maybe trying to make some of my own music for my videos. PlaidSquid41030 said, Any idea what kind of tank this is? See picture below. It looks like a Panzer Katwagen V, Panther and it looks like it has quite a fierce and adorable crew. Ratto said, Have you ever thought about using gloves while airbrushing? At least for enamels. Acrylics can poison you through skin too, but the enamels are more toxic. I have thought about it, but I find them really uncomfortable. I don't really spend all that much time with paint on my skin, I think, for it to be a huge concern. I'm probably more likely to be killed or made sick by diabetic complications and things like that. I probably would wear them if I were painting all day, and if I was handling something a bit more dangerous I would definitely wear gloves, but I don't feel like it's a huge risk. Besides, everything gives you cancer and causes all kinds of illnesses anyway, apparently. What's one more thing? Xeno Grief said, Will you ever play the game Frostpunk? I don't know. I quickly googled it and it looks like it's only just came out between the time you asked the question and the time of recording. So I've not really looked into it very much at all, and that means I don't know if I can justify spending the $30 on it. But you never know. Maybe. I will look at it again later. The concept is kind of interesting, so yeah, I might play it. On last week's Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, Michael Ormitson said, Are you going to be playing the new Battletech video game? Looks pretty awesome. Stompy robots. 
Also, have you tried MechWarrior Online? It's a World of Tanks style, free to play game with robots. They've just added a 1v1 Solaris mode which is really fun. I do like stompy robots. I think somebody mentioned this a while ago, and it's another case of I'm not really sure I want to spend the $40 for this game. I might, but I haven't really had the chance to look too far into it and be convinced. But maybe. I haven't played MechWarrior online. I am a little bit tempted though. I may try it out on stream sometime. That might be fun. Or funny. The fact that it's free makes it just that little bit more appealing to just try it out. If I don't enjoy it, I don't really lose anything except maybe a little bit of time. James Valentine said, I just missed getting my Panzer 3 ready in time. Hopefully it'll meet your approval for the next one, Herr Derp. This one isn't so much a question, but I just wanted to say that you don't need to meet my approval with your work. Nor should you in any way rush to be in the video. Maybe you're just joking, but I think maybe someone might take it seriously. I don't know. I'm just a dingus that likes making videos, and likes to see what other people are doing and sharing that and encouraging others and so forth. You do excellent work, and it's definitely worth waiting an extra little bit to see it. Harvey Savage said, What company would you suggest for a beginning scale modeler? On a side note, I truly enjoy your work and look forward to seeing more. I'm really pleased that you enjoy my work. It's nice to have positive feedback. IS2's response covered this pretty well. The important questions are, what do you want to make and how much do you want to spend? I mostly build wargaming models, and I don't really have a whole lot of knowledge about scale model kits, so I'm not really comfortable to point out any specific kits for beginners. That said, it's pretty hard to go wrong with Tamiya. They've got a big range and shouldn't be too hard to build, and you can find them pretty much anywhere. I will recommend an airfix kit if you're into tanks, the 172nd scale or maybe it was 176th, I'm not really sure. Either way it was the airfix Cromwell. It's a newer kit and I found it a pleasure to build and it shouldn't be too hard for a beginner. Older airfix stuff is likely to be poor quality and kind of frustrating to build, which is obviously not that good for beginners. They are cheap though, so maybe if you're resilient, you could just battle your way through those. They'll probably hone your skills a bit, but they might be quite frustrating and you might give up. I guess that's something you need to work out for yourself. And finally, Chud Chudsley said, Do you ever read the comments on your 25 Days of Baby Mice video? Some of them are batshit insane. Yeah, you're not wrong there. I do see those comments. Most of them are pretty innocent. Just people saying, oh, or mice are cute, or whatever. Some of them are kind of stupid in the sense that they can't tell the difference between mice and rats, and feel a need to blither about rats being gross and things like that. But there is the occasional edgelord saying that they should be crushed with a hammer or going on about feeding them to their snakes or whatever. As though the fact that mice are eaten by other animals is something edgy or some kind of horrible revelation or something like that. Some of them get caught by the spam filter and are just deleted because of how stupid or awful they're trying to be. It's kind of hard to tell if they're just being edgelords because it's the internet or if they've really got something wrong with them. But in the end, that's not my problem. My friend and I have a laugh at some of them trying to be awful sometimes. It'll be like, Hey Dad, did you know that snakes eat them? And I'll think, yes, sometimes that happens. Snake gotta eat. Some of my mice have actually been fed to snakes too, after being properly euthanized of course. Most of the comments aren't really worth responding to though, but yes I do see them. And with that, question time is over. Let's go and see what modeling delights have been shared on Discord this week. First up, Ratto has a size comparison between Zvezda's M3 Stewart, Plastic Soldier Company's M5 Stewart, and a Battlefront M4 Sherman. I do believe the M3 and M5 should be slightly different in size, at least the hull, but it is probably a smaller difference than those models depict. The size differences don't really matter a whole lot to me, but I can see how it might upset some. Either way, nice looking tanks. And here's what Ratto was working on on whatever day it was that he posted this, modulating some jeeps and armoured cars and general pattern. And decals. Everyone likes decals, right? Crimson1149 shared these rebels that he got from a friend. They do look quite rebellious, and I hope you'll be sharing them in their painted form sometime soon. He's also added these four horsemen to his Irish, and that completes his force. They look very good. I hope they win many battles for you and aren't too full of the Guinness. 
And then there's a few images of a 40k apocalypse game at a con. I'm not sure which. Definitely thousands of dollars worth of stuff here. I mean, that's the joke with 40k stuff, but it's really not far from the truth. Pretty impressive looking stuff though. Duncan Hoover has finished this 172nd scale shield like a Zoid, and he plans to customise it at some point. I can't help thinking of Zoidberg when I see the word Zoid. Those huge teeth look rather bitey. Lizalica1 said, Airfix isn't that bad. These are from 1975 to 1978. I do agree, and I haven't really helped, that Airfix does get a bit of a bad reputation around here. To be fair, they are very accessible, and they're not always bad. Especially if you get a hold of a newer kit. My biggest problem is the boxes look new, but they could either have something ancient or something new inside, and I don't like that practice. Anyway, here's some images of a Yugoslavian MiG-29A. This is a Tamiya model. I don't know much at all about Jet, but I do like that shade of green. Very nice work. Post Apo Gestapo shared this 172nd scale Opal Maltia that has seen better days. This is a really nice little diorama, and it's quite convincing work. He's also shared this obviously still in progress 135th scale Tamiya Sherman, saying he thinks he went a little bit too far with the highlights. Somebody pointed out that it looks like it's been quite sun bleached, and it does, which is cool. But if you want to darken it down, I'm sure some washes would help. Like Ratto said, if you're going to be weathering with oil washes and filters, it's probably best to overhighlight a little bit anyway. Either way, I look forward to the finished result. James Valentine has shared this beautiful Panzer III. This is some delightful work. The model is the Rubicon Panzer III kit. It wasn't ready for last week's video, but I think it was well worth the wait. Excellent work. He's also shared this picture of his first ever Primaris. If I'm saying that right, I'm probably not. Marine saying this is just for fun, nothing serious. I think it looks awesome. And here's a British slash Polish para sniper. This model is the Artisan Designs metal figure. Looks great, and I much prefer fun over serious. And I would call these very, very well painted fun. Then there's this Meng Toon Tanks KV-2. It's quite derpy, in an almost cute way, and it's very nicely painted. You've found a good blend of realistic and comic style here, I think. The Big Boy has shared this 172nd scale M4A3 Sherman, which is an Italary model. It was built and painted in one day, which is apparently a personal record. I'm kind of impressed. It's rather neat and definitely looks the part. Well done. Hold on though, because the big boy broke his own record, with this ISU-122. This Italary kit was built and painted in one morning, and it looks pretty good, especially considering the speed with which it was both built and painted. Good job. Penfold07 has shared a bunch of stuff including this 1970s issue Crusader 2 in 172nd scale, and a blister pack Matilda. I've never heard of an Airfix blister pack, but I guess I am just under 35, so Penfold is right enough in saying that those older than 35 will know what he means. This Matilda will be a Soviet Lend-Lease tank. Speaking of Soviet, here are three 176th scale Russian tanks, all Fujimi. The grab handles on the KV-2 are staples, which is pretty cool. It's nice to see when people are resourceful. These Germans are a mix of Matchbox and Fujimi. This 176 scale Matilda is made by Fujimi. More detailed and more tricky to build than the Airfix kit, this one went into the bin before being retrieved and finished. I think we've all been there at some point. If not, you probably will be one day. Next we have this pair of Pumas made by Matchbox. These are 176 scale. Here's a work in progress. This is a Matchbox 6 rad radio car. It also went into the bin owing to a missing part, which was later replaced by a scratch-built part. In addition to these pictures, Penfold shared pictures of what I would call a metric fuckton of kits that he has stashed away. It's kind of jealousy inducing in a way. If you want to check that out, head on over to the Discord and see them for yourself. This Tiger is a Fujimi model. These are Revel slash Matchbox Panzer IIs. They're wet having just been given a bath. Here's a Matchbox Chaffee and Humba Armoured Car. Penfold, you have a lot of really cool stuff. Thank you for sharing. Smoes shared this Tamiya M577, which is waiting for a base coat and some fiddly bits. It's very boxy, and I can't wait to see it finished. 
Outlook Carve has shared this small tank which, as you might guess by the lack of turret, is in progress. It's a Panzer II, which variant I'm not quite sure. I hope you'll share your progress as you go. Sneaky Zaku has shared this tactical Ecoas Jigen. Jigen? I know I pronounced this right in one of my videos, I've just forgotten how. This is alongside one of Gundam's original mook suits, the GM. And here's all the Jigen. Jigen? Whatever you call them, here's a bunch of them. I think I like the one with the giant missile things the most, because giant missile things. Top Bunk Productions posted some work in progress Necrons, and asks if anyone has a suggestion for a way to make the rods look like they're glowing. These are plastic tubing in place of the missing translucent parts. What I would try doing is choose whichever green or whatever colour you want, base coat it in a darker shade and then dry brush it using your chosen colour. I think that's something the makeup contour brush I've spoken about in the past would work a treat. I'd probably want to add a gloss coat to the rods when the model is finished too. And that's all the models for this week. Quite a lot of stuff really, and I enjoyed it all. Hopefully you did too. Of course, some of the images have been omitted, so feel free to head over to the miniatures channel on my Discord server and check it out. Before I go, let's take this time to celebrate my newest patron, Duncan McIntyre. Thank you very much for your support, Duncan. Keep an eye out for a poll in the next couple of days. I'm going to want yours and all of my patrons' opinions on something coming up. If you want to be super excellent like Duncan, head over to my Patreon page, link in the description, and click the buttons and do the things that turn you into a patron. I would certainly appreciate it. Once again, thank you very much Duncan. And of course, as usual, if you have any questions you would like me to answer on Ask a Herbert Herbert or any other comments, put them in the comment section here or on Discord, and also do the other things like subscribing here on YouTube, following me on social media, and watching me livestream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, maybe you'd like to consider buying a shirt or a mug or something. Links to all of those things are in the description below. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.